You're looking at a live view of Falcon 9 as it awaits its 2.42 a.m. Eastern Time liftoff from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Hello and welcome to the live webcast for our 27th Starlink mission. My name is Michael Andrews, and I'm a supply chain supervisor here at SpaceX. It's still Saturday evening here at our SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California, but it's just after 2.30 a.m. on Sunday, May 9th at the launch site in Florida. Tonight's launch will mark a record-breaking 10th flight of a single first-stage booster. After stage set, the first stage will return back to Earth and attempt its record-breaking 10th landing on our drone ship called Just Read the Instructions. And like I mentioned earlier, we're flying today's booster for a record-breaking 10th time today. This particular first stage booster first flew on the Crew Demo-1 mission back in March of 2019 and has since supported two additional commercial launches and six other Starlink missions, not including the seventh one tonight. The bottom two-thirds of our vehicle is known as the first stage. You can see the soot markings left over from its previous nine flights. And like I said before, we're going to be attempting to recover that first stage for that 10th time on our drone ship you see pictured here. It's known as Just Read the Instructions. And similar to our first stage, this fairing assembly is protecting, it's protecting our payload tonight previously flew on the GPS-3 Space Vehicle 4 mission and will be attempting to retrieve each fairing half from the water using the recovery ship Sheila Bordelon. For those of you following SpaceX, you know that it's been an exciting time for the development of our Starship launch system. Just a few days ago on Wednesday, May 5th, Starship serial number 15, known as SN15, successfully completed SpaceX's fifth high-altitude flight test of a Starship prototype from Starbase, Texas. Our Starship spacecraft and Super Heavy rocket, collectively referred to as the Starship, are designed to be a fully reusable transportation system that can carry both crew and cargo to Earth's orbit, the moon, Mars, and beyond. Five, 15 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition and lift off. Let's go, Sockets, and number 10. Pitching down the board chamber pressure is nominal. shut off and they slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage step. And that's where, once again, the first stage and separate, second stage separate. Stage one makes its way back down to sea level for landing and stage two continues its primary mission along with the fact that the MVAC engine lights up and propels that second stage along okay, with the starting satellite storm. Following a nominal trajectory. We're 30 seconds away from those events. Falcon 9 continues to be on nominal trajectory. Our MVAC engine is starting to chill to prepare for that second engine start just about 20 seconds from now. And shortly after these three events, our fairing will deploy and expose the Starlink satellites to the vacuum of space. Okay. 
Engine, engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. Invac ignition. All good news so far. The nine Merlin engines have shut down. Our first and second stages are heading their separate ways, and our MBAC engine has begun burning and will continue to do so for about the next six minutes. Bearing separation confirmed. We have confirmation, and you can see it there. The two fairing halves have jettisoned and are heading back down. As a reminder, this is the second flight for these fairing halves, and we'll be attempting to recover them once again via a wet recovery from the contracted recovery vessel, Sheila Bordelon. Everything is nominal so far. Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. We're just about four minutes after liftoff. For those of you just joining us, we have a lot going on. On the right-hand side of your screen, you can see our second stage, and its MBAC engine is burning, carrying 60 Starlink satellites to orbit. And on the other hand, we have our first stage uh, beginning its 10th recovery attempt. Um, as stage two continues to burn, as you see here, stage one is actually going to execute two separate burns signals, in order to make its way back to Earth. The first of which is the entry burn. Just a little more than two minutes from now, three of those M1D engines will reignite. This helps slow the, the first stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere and reduces the loads on the vehicle. After that burn uh, starts, ends, and is confirmed successful, we get ready for our final burn, the landing burn. It's a single center engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship safely. And as a reminder, we can't stress it enough, tonight marks the 10th flight for this particular first stage. This is a record for our Falcon 9 rocket's life cycle. This particular booster first debuted on our Crew Demo 1 mission just over a year ago. Now, reusability is critical to what we do at SpaceX. This fact that we can reuse our first stages, it allows us to refly the most expensive parts of the rocket, which in turn drives down the ultimate cost to space access. And although this is the 10th time for this rocket, we first reused the normal orbital class rocket on the SES-10 mission back in March of 2017. It just goes to show how far we've come since then. We're about a minute away from that entry burn beginning. That burn should last for about 20 seconds. about 30 seconds away from that first stage empty burn igniting. The center engine will ignite at first. Two more engines will ignite shortly after that. The Merlins on this first stage are optimized to operate at sea level, and they achieve about 190,000 pounds of thrust apiece during ascent and descent. Just a few Stage seconds one, away. FTS has saved. A few seconds away from the entry burn. Stage one, entry burn startup. You can see that plume is starting to expand as the other two engines spot begin to fire. Stage one, entry burn shutdown. And there you go, the entry burn has successfully ended. And now we're just a little more than a minute and a half away from the Both final vehicles burn. continue to follow nominal trajectories. Now, for those of you who follow along with SpaceX, you know that the soot you see on a rocket indicates it's been flown before. Um, here's an explanation of how that soot forms and why that first stage is so dirty in this case. Uh, the rocket-grade kerosene, RP-1, uh, that Falcon's 
the Power Falcon 9 is carbon-based, and when you burn it, it creates soot. Uh, now, as we approach the landing site, like you saw just now, that long entry burn slows the vehicle down, and since we come in engines first, the booster flies through its own plume and exhaust, which hey, deposits straight on the on rocket. It. And if you watch the feed, like you saw just there, you saw that soot starting to fly up and stick to the lens. We're only about 20 seconds away from that landing burn starting. And also during that time, our four landing legs will deploy um, while that single engine is firing to help us safely land on just read the instructions. Stage one, landing burn startup. See it there, our landing burn's begun. Hopefully we get Stage continuous two coverage. Terminal guidance. And also our second engine will cut off shortly after this landing attempt. Stage one, landing leg deploy. We have continuous views right there. This looked great. Stage two, FTS is saved. And there you have it. We have a confirmation of a successful 10th landing of this booster and the 83rd overall successful recovery of the Falcon 9 first stage.